Okay, I want to welcome everybody to the first Spark Booth creative class on how to create rainbow text. And in the rainbow text, what we are going to actually be doing is something outside of Spark Booth itself. And it'll basically be using a program called paint.net. And that when you go to the paint.net at www.getpaint.net, you'll get this page here. Don't click on the start now or the start or the start now. You click up here where it says, get it now, free download. And you download it on your computer. You do not need to download it right now, okay? You can download it later on. Also, we are going to be using some files that I've already uploaded, such as this rainbow image that we're gonna actually turn into text, okay? And I've uploaded these image files to the Spark Booth users group page, where you can go there and download them from the files. So you've got this one and you've also, and you, this is what we're gonna create is like rainbow type text. And you can do it either on a black background or a white background. And all of those images are on the Spark Booth users group page. Okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to pause the recording for a moment. Okay, what I have done here is I have opened up in in the uh, Earth, in the paint.net program that blank white page. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some text. I'm going to click on the T over here. And because this window is extremely big, you see the font is very small. I'm just going to make this great big, like 108. Okay. And then you type in, it's typing it in black on white. And I'm going to type in happy birthday. Booby. <laughs> happy birthday, Bobby. And I would suggest that you use a font that is, you know, something that's not real fancy. You can, you can use any font you want. But I would also try to make it bold because we are going to be making these letters transparent. Okay. And the, the larger they are to fill this area, the more of the color rainbow in the background it's going to create. So if I tried 144, will that fit? Let's see if that will fit. I'll use that. It does fit. Okay. Uh, so Basically, once I have created the text, I can click on the magic wand over here. And the magic wand will make anything you click on that, that color in that area transparent. You click on it, it highlights it, and then you hit the delete key. The squares represent tra it's transparent. You click on each one of the letters and you wanna make sure when you click on the letters, that you're clicking the letter. If you click something else, just click the undo up here to let go of what you clicked on. So if you click the B, hit delete, click the dot, hit the delete, hit the I, R, T, H, D, A, miss the H, Y, delete, B, delete, O, delete, B, O, B, now we are going to save this file and when we're saving this file down at the bottom it will have i uh, hit the file save as and save it in some folder where you can find it and i'm just going to call this text one okay white and hit save Okay, and then what it'll do is it pops up at the bottom down here, the OK or cancel. You review it to make sure it looks good, zoom it back and forth, and then click OK. So now this has been saved. Then you go to the folder. I'm going to move it down even further here so I can right click on this and I'm going to go into the folder on my desktop. And there is a folder called, where did it go? Creativity class, rainbow text. Now I'm going to get that rainbow text colors, right click on it, open with paint.net. 
So now it has opened up the rainbow right here. Okay, and right next to it is the, the text that I had. I can actually in here, click on edit, select all, and then up here hit copy. Once I have done that, I can go back over into the rainbow that I've added and click on layers. This is not complicated. It might sound like it, but it's not. <coughs> you click on layers <coughs> and you add a new layer and then click paste. Okay. Once you've done that, you want to file save it and we are going to make sure we save it as a png file it will try to save it as a pdn file with as a paint.net file we want to change that to png but we're not going to make it transparent at this time and this one even though it's called rainbow text i'm going to i'm going to rename it text2 okay doesn't matter colors and then i hit save and i'm going to double check it to make sure it's what i wanted to save and i'm going to click ok it's going to say flatten or cancel we want to flatten it doesn't matter okay now that we've done that we can actually close paint.net for for now or what we can do is go to the folder back down here where rainbow text was saved, go to the folder in this new one, open with paint.net. It'll open a third one up here. And this one here, we are going to click on the magic wand and you click on the white area outside the text and you click delete and it makes it transparent. So now we are going to end in all the white areas you're gonna to click to make them transparent. So we're gonna end up with the text we typed on the white box, completely transparent, but now with rainbow colors, file, save as, Okay, and we're gonna it's it's saving as a PNG because that's what we had it as before. Click OK and it saved it to that same folder. So now in that folder, let me try to get to the folder over here. You'll see the happy birthday Bobby is transparent. Now let's see how we can use that same transparency. Let me close up all of these windows and get it over to actual spark booth go to my desktop open up spark booth seven hopefully you can still see all of my screen and all of my junk do, do, do. let me get rid of some of these windows down here Bear with me, it's opening. Do, do, do. Okay, here I am, not very bright. Don't say anything, Dennis. <laughs> okay, uh, and how can we use that in Spark with I will show you right now. We'll go into the layout editor and I'll try to find, oh, here's a layout here. Uh, I'm going to open up this layout here that's created, and we're going to add that file in that was a image file now, and it was on the desktop in the creative, creativity class, where did it go, creativity class, rainbow text, happy birthday, Bobby. Now you'll see here, you see how big it is? because that's how wide we made it as large as we could because when you make it as large as you can it will not distort it by making it smaller but if you made it too small it will get raggedy when you try making it too big so we only wanted to put happy birthday 
In fact, we could put happy birthday up here, okay? And add an effect to it, like a drop shadow, okay? And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see you can drop, put in a drop shadow or one of the other, running out of time. Let's get this out of the way. I've seen that before and we don't, not running out of time. Happy birthday, Bobby. Or you can put it down at the bottom like we had it down here with the black. So you can still use the effects on an image file. So I would make that drop shadow white, make it a little smaller and it looks like an outline. You can still rotate it. So, so that's how you can actually do the happy birthday uh, text. But you got to remember, this is no longer text. It is now a image file. But it is a creative way of doing it so that you're using it in the, in the software. Now, speaking of the software, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to minimize this for a moment. Once it finishes, I'm going to minimize this. Finish loading in Bobby over there. I'm going to show you something extremely cool that is done in this other folder here. I have a creatively generate backgrounds. Spark Booth Creativity class, how to create a custom background. Right in the software itself, you can actually create custom backgrounds, okay? So to do that, we go back into the SparkBooth software. In 7.0, in the layout editor, let's pretend this layout that we're looking at has no background at all, because a lot of times, and, and I'm also going to get rid of the overlay screen that was on top of the photo boxes, okay? But you, instead of adding a color, you can change it to any color you want. That's really cool, okay? But there's a better way. You can actually create your own, generate a background, and built into it are backgrounds that, that, we're built into it here, okay? So if we have a vertical layout like this here and I grab this background, you see it actually flips it 270 degrees, but you can, you can rearrange it so it looks a little different, but it will fill the screen even though it's facing in the wrong direction, okay? So if you put it 90 degrees, it would put it upright, 270 will put it the other way. These are ones that are built in, okay? There's red curtains even, okay? So we turn them 90 degrees or 120 degrees. It's kind of hard to tell what you're looking at here. 180 degrees puts it up and down, but you don't see the sides edges because it's going up and down. But there's also the ability to do linear gradient with up to six different colors and you pick whatever color if you wanted it to be red white and blue okay and make it red white and blue again now i'm doing it kind of quickly here is that six it is but you can actually change the angles so it gets a little more creative here in the gradient so if you clicked create it will drop that in the background, just like that. You create your own backgrounds. Or you could use, instead of the images or the gradient, you can do radial images, which up to six different colors, okay? Change the colors to anything you want. If you wanted this to be more red and this to be a darker blue, okay? Or less colors, you can minus out a color. And then you can actually add a, it's going to, well, I'm hitting the wrong buttons here. You can make it point and then in the direction, it pointing in different directions. 
by making it a focal ratio. And the focal ratio goes from center to up and point it around. And then you just hit create and it changes that background image like that. That's a couple. One more here would be, well, wrong button, cancel, hit the wrong one. One other one here would be in here is the striped, same concept. Uh, you can make it up how many, how many you want in the screen, how many, how many colors, vertical or horizontal. Okay. Or you could take it and you can use it tiled, make six different colors, a lot of pixels, less pixels, how this is how big the pixels are. Okay. Uh, one that you can also do over here, I'm going to cancel that and click over here again, because instead of doing backgrounds, you can actually add backgrounds like I've done here. I use backgrounds all the time. So I have some horizontal backgrounds and vertical backgrounds that are four by six that I've already added in. So if I were doing a double strip, I could add in this one here and make it 90 degrees. So it's, I'm sorry, 200 and, why is it not rotating? There we go. It's going up and down the way it's supposed to be in zero and hit create. Now the background becomes this new background that I've added in there already, or I can pick one of my other ones, okay? If I, if I were doing a, uh, a horizontal layout this way, I could use one of these. OK, and either way, you could still use one of these, like uh, let's say I was going to use this one here in a, ver a vertical up and down and still rotate it around so it looks differently in the background and then click create and it'll fill the background with that new background color sometime today. <laughs> there we go. So you can actually get really creative with something that's in the SparkBoo 7.0 software that we didn't even really know about, even if you were creating two by six strips, okay? You could have your own, add your own backgrounds in here. And I added a whole bunch. So basically this is something that's already built in. It's kind of not talked about, but you can actually do that within the software. So that's kind of pretty much what we've got for our Spark Booth class for now. And uh, I'll close up this one here and go back to my Spark, my, my window here. Where is my window? Stop sharing my screen is what I need to do. I'm gonna stop sharing. And it comes back over to my screen. So that kind of pretty much ends it. Any Anybody have any questions or, or turn on your mic and do this? <laughs> I see you laughing in the background up there, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a question. When you create the backgrounds, uh, backdrops, backgrounds, yep. do you use those in uh, PaintNet or can you also use them on Photoshop? You can create them. All you have to remember when you're creating a background, okay, a background image for a full four by six layout, whether it's the wide or the tall, okay, it needs to be 1800 is the widest part right. or the tallest part. And the other side is 1200 for the skinny part or the mm -hmm. skinny part. So it's 1800 pixels by 1200 pixels and then at 300 dots per inch is the, the size. That is right. an exact four by six image, okay? Okay, okay. And if you wanna go bigger like a six by eight? You can, if you have a printer that will print six by eight, uh -huh. in the layout editor over here in the, let me try to get back to sharing my screen here and I'll show you. Um, portion of the screen and I'm going to hit share in the layout editor. Can you see my screen here, folks? Yeah. Okay. 
in the layout editor, when you create a new layout, which is right up here, the second icon, new layout, you name uh -huh. it whatever you want, uh -huh. okay? And you pick the paper size. There are a whole lot of different sizes you can pick from, from two by six all the way up to eight by 10, six by eight. There's a bunch of them in here. There's, uh, and, and if you don't have a size that's in here, you let me know and I can create one as long as your printer will print to that size. So basically you're not limited to four by six. You can do three by four. You can do three and a half by five. Whatever your printer is capable of doing, you have the ability to create a layout in that size. Okay? So that basically kind of covers all the different size papers that you'd ever need to use. So I think we're pretty much done here. Anything else down the road, I'll let you know, or you can contact me and we'll do a Skype meeting and uh, pick it up from there. Uh, in fact, the next Zoom class, uh, the next class we're going to do, we're not going to use Zoom because you don't, you didn't realize it in this video, but we got cut off, okay? And I had to add this last little portion separately, and I'm now recording it to add it to the video. So I want to thank everybody for coming, and uh, and I want to thank everybody for joining us at our first Spark Booth Creativity class, where we actually covered two subjects. This will be posted on the Spark Booth Facebook users group page as soon as I have it all ready to go and you'll be able to see it there and it'll also be on our Facebook uh, on our YouTube page our Sparkbirth YouTube page as soon as John load uploads it to that page thanks a lot for coming talk to you later bye bye